This is Manchester. By day, it's run by police. By night, it's run by gangsters. Manchester is where I was born, where I live, and where I'll die. Dominic Latley Fotvoy is one of Manchester's most notorious gangsters. He's over 40 convictions for armed robbery, police assault, attacks on prison officers, deception, firearms, prison escape, and fraud. He has been charged with prison riot, conspiracy to import drugs, extortion, and has been implicated in, though never convicted, of a number of gangland murders. When I was doing the Hacienda door, it was a tough door. The different gangs, Moss Side, Team Old, Salford, all turning up, all wanting to come in for nothing. So, um, me and this other lad that ran the door said, Enough was enough, let's take the trouble to them. And we did, took it to them. But. <laughs> Tell me the story. <laughs> the dog said. That was the nickname for the pub after that. Everyone used to say, I'll meet you down at the dog's head. We just went to the pub. He had a shotgun on him. And they had a machete. And uh, one of the gang lads that was about, so... I just chopped its head off and carried it inside the pub and put it on the pool table. And uh, more or less told him and asked him to stay away from the hacienda. Or the next time it'd be a human head and they never came back. Dominic James Latley fought for the first. Many years ago, my dad used to say to me, just look after those that look after you. Fuck off those that fuck off you. So I changed it by that name. So Latley fought for it. That's what the initials stand for. Dominic is a member of the infamous Noonans, a well-known criminal family. He changed his name by deep pole in prison, where he has spent 22 of his 39 years. Dominic, this is home. <laughs> <laughs> These are all my kids. These are my nephews, god sons and uh, cousins. No one else love them. Dominic has two children of his own by different mothers. You see the size of my fish tank? Very expensive. See them? They're very, very expensive, them. This is Aidan, my godson. Got his head flushed before, it's didn't you, mate? Bugsy, my son. Bugsy. And Bugsy, who's your mum? Manda. Manda. I love the kids coming around. It reminds me of my little days when I was a kid. And so it's uh, just the same madhouse that you had growing up? Yeah, it was mad. We all bring our own friends home, so you can imagine there'd be 40 or 50 people in the house. The people upstairs and everywhere. When the house went on fire, the, the old lot went through all the ceiling, right up to the top. So when you walked in, you could see right to the top. Yeah. Is that my vest there? Dirty you now, look, they just, they just stamped all over it. So has it has it ever been used in anger? I wear it when I'm on meetings. Or when I go out with my mum's for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> when you were doing the armed robberies, would you use the... Yeah, I would, I would put one on, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I always wore one. But I don't do those things no more. I've set up my own security firm. Oh, yeah. Security. A flourishing business. <laughs> Dominic made his reputation by hijacking cash-laden security vans and has added one to his private vehicle collection. Does that need a new wheel on it or what? Does that need pumping up or a new wheel? I must admit, it's, it is my favourite vehicle of all vehicles. I'd have that one. The bus, the taxis, forget about it. That's my favourite vehicle. It brings back memories. Are you still up for business? If the right job come along, yeah. And have you been asked? I've been asked by many teams. Yeah. But I've knocked them back. Yeah. It's just not right money, or I didn't like it. It's a pity, really, because one of them I was offered on there, we got a lot of money out of it. Did they? And I was devastated after this. You, you missed your chance. I did. And every time you pass one of these vehicles on the road, you get a bit of a... Uh, I get an hard on. Do you? I actually get an hard on. Dominic spent over 22 years in 27 prisons across Britain. He led a violent campaign against prison officers, 
and was one of the architects of the Strangeways riot. Two dead and nearly 200 wounded. The prison revolt cost more than 50 million pounds. Are you proud of your work with the Prisoners Liberation Army? I was, yeah. I was made up. Now we've got our own back on them. A sense of justice. Desmond Noonan, Dominic's older brother, is a serious criminal. He has a long track record as an armed robber and a reputation as a gangland executioner. Yeah, my mates asked me to whack me, Phil. Did they? So, yeah. You're not very good, are you? Believe it or not, Don, we're a nice, we're a nice family. We've got, we, do, we, do, we don't do everything nice, but you know, we, 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 do look after, we do look after each other. We look after our friends. We come out at end of three or four in the morning. We, we stop all the burglars. We, we stop most of the filthy fucking dogs hanging about, you know what I mean? It's not just that we're strong anyway. We've got, we've got lots of strong, loyal people around us. We'll always have that. You know, if they think they can just take one of us out on his over, then they're silly fucking people, very silly people. The death in August 2003 in a motorcycle accident of their younger brother Damien, a gangland peacekeeper and enforcer, brought the family's respect and power to public attention. Large parts of northwest Manchester were brought to a standstill for the funeral. Ten police riot vans supervised the wake. 100 policemen blocked the roads for the cortege. Greater Manchester Police asked the family to contribute to the cost of the operation. The Noonans refused. Dominic Noonan, a.k.a. Mr. Latley Fotfoy, has taken over from his brother as the head of one of Manchester's most powerful crime families. The Noonans, 14 of them, were brought up in a two-bedroom house close to the cemetery. Their mother burnt their house down in an effort to move up the housing list. As children, they stole the fences and garden sheds of neighbours for firewood. Have you seen them lights light up at night? I've not seen them. Have you seen them? Seen they're thingy, them. aren't they? Yeah, and solar power. And they light up and they flicker. <laughs> Fucking drives me fast, keep telling him, slow it down, man. Loads of armed robbers in Boston. Pull over there, under there. Pull over under there. That there, that van there, you see it? Yeah. That video is all the fucking security vans around there. You, it'll sit there, there's a security van due any second now to this bank here. There it is, look, bang on time. Now he goes into the back, his mate gets out. <laughs> He's got a vest on him, he has, hasn't he? Yeah. Got a bulletproof vest, but I've never seen that one before. Oh yeah, they, they drop off half a million pounds in that bank. If you were on the job, what would you do? What, on that one now? Yeah. I'd park up there in the van, and as he comes out, I'd burst out the door and grab him. What would you say to him? <laughs> Follow me over here now. You, open the fucking door, throw the bags out now, start throwing them out. Quick. You will do it. Throw the fucking bags out now! Get it! Police chase can sometimes be scary or a buzz. Depends what's after you, what's behind you. And why they're chasing you. If you're coming off a job, then you're more, you're more worried. If, you, if you've gone out of the river and look for the chase, it's a buzz. So would you go out and deliberately create a... Uh, uh, a chase, provoke a chase. Many years ago, yeah. Tell me about that. Yeah, it's the police now. So we take one now if you want. Watch your shirt and take a fucking chase down the watch. That's not, that's not. Are you sure? Yeah, thanks. All right, then. <laughs>
11 years ago, the police were chasing Dominic all over Britain when they suspected he'd arranged his own escape from custody in order to go on a robbery spree. Police in Manchester say they're baffled by the apparent kidnapping of a remand prisoner. As John Molson reports, they're not sure whether he's been abducted or whether it was part of an elaborate escape. You broke out from, from a prison van to rob a, a security van. We had uh, two security vans to rob the same day. One in the morning around about 10 o'clock, one at 4 o'clock. We was going for the double, no one's ever done the double before. So we just thought we'll have a laugh. Two masked men ran up to the car at these lights. One had a hammer, the other a gun. They threatened the prison officers and forced them to release Noonan. In the struggle, the gun was fired, but no one was hurt. Noonan was bundled into the back of a waiting car. Police say they're now afraid for his safety, if he's been abducted. What was the reaction of the uh, prison officers? Uh, they actually he admitted in court that he uh, pissed his pants. He said, I just pissed my pants in the back of the car. I could hear him pissing anyway. And uh, when I remember saying to him, don't let him take me, don't take the cuffs off. And he said, I can't, I can't stop him, I can't stop him. Because they had the gun pressed against him saying, take the cuffs off. Oi, shh, fuck off. Quick, set the dog on you. You can see this film, so shut your fucking mouth and fuck off. Now. Fucking mong. Sorry. He only managed one armed robbery and was back in prison within five days. Despite the kidnapping ruse, he was convicted and sentenced to another 14 years. Today. How many have in? Too many, too many kids going back to school. How's Damien's kids? Yeah, they're all right. Yeah. About eight months, nine months, is it? Shocked everyone, wasn't it? Couldn't believe it, but I found out. Devastated, devastated. Did you go? I went to the funeral, yeah, but there's so many in the church, I couldn't get anywhere near it. No. So, Andy, what are you getting done today? Extensions. I think a, a uniform commands respect. Yeah, it does. And then they make his respect back. And your boys really kind of have a uniform, don't they? Boys wearing, looking pretty sharp and wearing ties. And... It's important to us, look good. And uh, we know we're being watched all the time, so we've got to look smart, especially in case we end up in front of a jury. How much money do you think has gone to the hands of the Newmans over the last 20 years? Allegedly. Allegedly made over five to six million. But where's the money? <laughs> That's the question I'm asking. <laughs> where's the money? Is it in property? Is it in horses? No, it's behind the bar in landlords' pubs. So with all the money you've made, you're still making money, you're still active. Is that the message you're still going out? I'm still dangerous. 
anyone's, anyone's dangerous. But there's some that are really dangerous. Are you really dangerous? Uh, yeah. 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 And the next generation is ready and waiting? Yeah, we're already primed. <laughs> so how many's in your crew? There's about 20, but I always keep the young ones around me because they're more loyal, more trustworthy, and they've uh, got a lot of respect for them and they've got a lot of respect for me. I know that they will watch my back and I'll have to respect them and watch their back. And they know I've had their backs many times for them because I know that they will die for me and I'll die for them. They'll shoot for me and I'll shoot for them. Dominic has been arrested by 30 armed police after hours of surveillance. Where's Adam and Michael? I don't know where Dominic is. Right there, nobody knows what's happened. All we know is the police have arrested Dominic in a uh, major move by the armed response unit. Now, when he was with us five minutes previously, Dominic was armed with little more than a bottle of Bex. But uh, I doubt if the police arrested him without good reason. They said it'll be out Monday now. They've taken the car, have they? No, we've got to go get out of the van now. That's okay. been clamped, sorry to say. It has. It's not. Jamie, Don said it might said. be. He said, Steve said they clamped them through the day. Dominic was picked up Saturday lunchtime and with the courts closed, won't be released until Monday, if at all. Can't do it right here, can you? No, we'll go on, just do one anyway. He's walking up the road here to collect the car, to collect the van, and an Audi's pulled up, now an Audi estate's so pulled up, skidded, jumped out, so no one moves standing against the wall. Freeze, where we're putting hands on, let me see your hands and all that. So why were you two guys fighting? Why? That was just a little silly argument blown out of why? the Why? Because the police were like, ah, he's, he's giving the police loads, yeah? And I'm just trying to calm down, saying, look, the more you shout, yeah, the more you're just going to get yourself up. They'll just, they'll just arrest you. I mean, they'll just say, look, sunshine, throw in the back of the van and he's riding the fucking... But there's a way of doing it and there's a way of explaining things to people. I'm poking somebody in the face in a public place just pissed me off. Yeah, right. So who's, who take, makes the decisions when Dominic is gone? Jay. Yeah. Unless it's big decisions where <laughs> his family will do it. Yeah. You're comfortable making those decisions yeah. while Dom isn't there? Yeah. Is that a heavy responsibility? No. It's not, not bad decision. Not if you know what you're doing. Yeah. Andy, how do you feel about <laughs> Jamie being the boss? Oh, God, Jamie. the boss, me and him are the oldest. Yeah. Simple as. And we're the younger brothers of the family. And how old are you now? Seventeen. You're seventeen. So if you if you um if you weren't working for Dom, what would you be doing? Acting. Acting. Right. So who, do you, who, are, you doing, who are you acting for? Um, I've done things for Red Productions, Love in the Twenty First Century. I've done adverts with Roy Keane and David Beckham. 
Really? I tried getting him in, but he won't get off his ass and get it into gear four and do his lines. Whoa, why do I need to sit and stand and just speak a load of bullshit into a camera? I've got better things to do with my time. You'd make more money from acting than you would from criminality. Oh, no, I won't say that. Oh, no. I'm not a criminal. Okay. You're just assuming I'm a criminal. I'm not a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I might not mean. But you're part of the crew. Are you part of the crew? Part of Dominic, Dominic's crew. Dominic's. I won't say I'm part of his crew. I'm friends with Dominic, do you know what I mean? He's looked after me. You clearly get respect when you go. Oh, yeah, you do. Every, everywhere he's gone, everywhere we've been with with him, innit? They, they always, everyone shakes your hand everywhere you go. I suppose you get a bit of a big head standing next to him. And all that. It's genuine, man. He's proper caring person. He's top. Do you think there'll ever be a day when one oh, of you guys yeah. are going to turn, a, turn oh. grass on the other? Oh, yeah. Every criminal gang always has a grass in it. Well, I'm lucky for those that do then, isn't it? Dominic Noonan, facing a range of charges, including kidnap and extortion, has been arrested for breach of bail. He was released on Monday morning. I was kept in the cell Saturday night and Sunday night. Um, no, no visits, no phone calls, no letters, no mails, no newspapers to read. Not even a change of clothing was allowed to be handed in. Uh, other prisoners got that, but not me, of course. Dominic Noonan convinced the court that he wasn't at fault. Unable to convict Dominic for his major crimes, the police pull him in on minor ones. They claim that Dominic's London cab isn't properly taxed. 12 police vehicles have come to take it away. You know what, for police harassment of DJ Noon security, you know the vehicles, you know they're all insured, you know they're all taxed. Bye. Do you ever think of going straight? I thought about it many times, but sometimes it's difficult. I mean, trying to set up a security firm, but the police won't let us go straight. So it's the way the police is around here in Manchester. Yeah, but going straight is a kind of personal decision, isn't it? You could go straight. You choose not to. No, you can go straight, but it's just that we've got that name. We've got that reputation. The reputation goes before the name. But you made that reputation along with your brothers. Maybe so, but at the end of the day, we, we don't really want to keep that reputation. It's just stuck with us. Stuck with us through generations of, of uh, uncles as well. And now our, our nephews are going to suffer the same. As we get older, they'll suffer the same. So do you think you, you were always destined to be a criminal and you were always destined to continue that work and not go straight? You never know what's around the corner. You never know what might win the lottery. I've got fucking all the stuff that I fucking need to sell, but I'm fucking yeah. on holiday and shit, no one's got any fucking money. Well, just talk to them, just tell them the story, and then we'll go and talk to the other fella and fucking get the payments down. Yeah, I, I can, like I said, I can get 500 for tomorrow morning. All right, I'll give you a call in about an hour, I'll let you know what's happening. All right, cheers, All right, ta This guy fucking got himself into some serious trouble. He's gone to some fucking really heavy gangster. He's got himself into some serious fucking debt. He's, he's offered the guy nine grand for a two grand fucking loan. The fucking knob. Mick got himself into debt to a London gangster and found himself being threatened to pay up or else. In desperation, he robbed a corner post office, armed with a towel wrapped around his forefinger. He called upon Dominic for help. Just for the record, what made you possess you to go into a post office with no weapon and expect to walk out? <laughs> Fucking stupidity, I think. I walked in, put the, put the bag in the, through the tray, said, put, in, put the money in the bag and don't do anything stupid. He went, what? So I repeated myself. He went, fuck off. <laughs> Pushed the button. I was like, fuck. Cause I've seen it on TV where the fucking shutters come, come down and the shutters come down at the front. I thought, oh, fucking no, hell, I'm well stuck here. No. And I turned around, looked at the door, and it was still like slightly open. I just fucking ran for the door. I was bumped in my car and I was gone. Was the alarm ringing? Oh, fuck yeah. That's loud, that. <laughs> that was loud, that. I remember that fucking sound. I remember that song forever. It was fucking horrible. So how were you caught? 
I did it in my own fucking car. <laughs> my own car. No fucking false reg plates on it. I, know, I parked the fucking thing outside. And you're coming up for trial shortly. Yeah. That'll be a plead guilty, I suppose. I can't fucking deny it, can I really? What to charge you with? Attempted robbery. Attempted robbery. Without firearms, though? Without firearms. Didn't you have on CCTV? No. You couldn't really prove it was you then? I've admitted it now. I I'm missing it now. Not I can do about it. The only reason that I went in there was through fear. That I'm like, I've got to get this fucking money. I've got to get my time running out. Cause it was like I had to do what I had to do. Mm. There's a lot of people, you know, with deaths like you, <coughs> you know, who are struggling. And how did they get out of it? How did they get out of it? That's what I'm. How did, how did they get out of it? It's not. It's not nice having all this money. But it's got to be a way out. Do you want to buy some carpet? All the fish have died out of that fish tank. Fuck off. No, you're pissing me off now. Hey, you're pissing me off. Move out of the way, will you? Just keep your fucking noise down or you'll be moving. Shut up. Shut up. I'll send someone out. I'll beat you up in a minute. Hey, Will. I will. This is my man over there. In daytime, acts as a social worker. Everyone seems to come to me with their problems around this area. And other areas outside Manchester too. And uh, it's one of them deprived areas. I was born here and bred here, and this is where I want to stay. Fuck you, no. It's a fucking safari. This is a rough area. They're knocking them all down. This is history, this. And they're just going to take it away. I'm going to a lady's house who just phoned me to say that her husband's been tapped with an hammer. And um, the guy who's done it is also threatened to burn the house down with the kids in it. This one. What's it called? Bailiff, stop it up. So this is their street. I like Bob. Instead of going to the police, many in the community here rely upon gangsters like Dominic to solve their social problems. I like Steve. He bit my arm and he twisted it and tried to snap it. Right? Then she comes screaming like a banshee. Blah did blah, said whatever. Do you know what I mean? He's come with an hammer to mm. the front door. Cracked him with the hammer. Then he hit you. Yeah. Who fucking killed you that blow to the head? Then threatened to torch the house with the kids. What do you want me to do? I don't know, I have a word or... I'll just basically tell them to stay away. Yeah. Can you leave a message after the phone? Right, you know, it's not going to ask Dominic promised to sort the man out and was rewarded with breakfast. Hi, 
Even a row over loud music requires Dominic's attention. Can we get some agreement what's wow. happening? Everyone just keeps the music down to level and fucking say good morning and that's it. I'd like to come back one more time and I'll monitor it for you. If there's a messing about. Well, why did I leave my house? I've been here 10 years. Can you answer me that? Yeah. I'm a genuine woman. You can see that. Well, all right. What's going to happen? A 16-year-old boy is being threatened and the family call in Dominic. Warnings were issued and the threat stopped. We're going to... Um would thought to remove a baby that was taken away but from the mother by the grandparents. Rachel has been trying to get her young daughter back for over a week. Get me on it, get me on it, take it away. Rachel's parents refuse to return their granddaughter while Rachel continues her relationship with her traveller boyfriend. The police and Dominic are called in to return the child. Right, we'll just take that fucking baby out. Back seat, back seat. Please, put that fucking cigarette out your fucking mouth. Fucking prick. Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. Move out, move out. You all right, kid? You've caused some problems tonight, haven't you? Hey? Dominic goes on his daily school run to pick up his godson, Paul. Where's little Paul? I haven't seen Paul. I have pick him up every day. Um. Don't even speak to her. Dominic, where is it? Do you know what? I'm not exactly sure what's going on now, but I'll tell you what. They've allowed him to walk out of the school, not even phone me. They're instructed to phone me or his mum immediately. There's a problem in the school with him and we'll pick him up. I've just gone off at that teacher in there. I said, you know the school, you know the rules. And they just let him walk out. Nobody phones up any of his parents to let him know he's walking around the streets of Manchester. He's not phoned home or nothing. So I don't know where he is. What? Paul made his own way home, having been suspended from school. When he was at the junior school, he was one of the best students. He, he come top in everything. He was really doing excellent, weren't you? Yeah. He enjoyed going. In a big school, I know it's hard for all kids in a big school, isn't it? But, but when they single you out and, and make things out of something that's nothing... He got suspended for about three weeks last month. Yeah. And I, I kept him in the house and just educated him in the house. Yeah. And he, he did well. I was surprised, I didn't know it could be the night, it seen how the beauty done. Are you trying to keep him off the facts, Sam? I wasn't even aware that he was on the facts, yeah. you see, or anything. And I spoke to Dom about this the other week, because a rumour had come back to me, he's got asthma, Paul, and a bad heart, so smoking is just n not an, a thing he should be doing, you know. Oh, I'm... you're going to give up the facts? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it is, it's difficult for him when being a kid, but listen, 
You should get them down to the doctor and get them nicotine packed in and let it work. Okay. <laughs> yeah, when I was there, it was A, B, C, right down to G. The cleverer you were, the more you were at the top, A, and the dumber you were, you were at the G. <laughs> Paul's on Z, though, isn't he? <laughs> Fuck, you just made up a new letter for him. Fucking hell, the bus is spinning you going like that. Well, that was you. Hated that The Noonans, in great gangster tradition, support the local boxing club. I've always thought, and I hope you don't mind me asking you this, that um, there was a hint of lavender about you, Dominic. Lavender? What, what makes you think that? Because I've got a bald head. Put it another way, you know, uh, are you gay? Yeah, of course I'm gay. Everyone knows I'm gay. Do they? Well, everyone around me knows I'm gay. Yeah. yeah. My family know. Brothers and sisters. Best mates. How did you first become aware that you were gay? When I was first aware of it, I think it was just messing about in an empty house with some of my mates. And then I carried it on from there, because I'd already experienced it. I went into a boarding school just the day after my birthday, and uh, I was 13 then, exactly 13, and uh, I was sat in the bedroom upstairs in the dorm. And then the night time come, I sat on the bed and just got punched straight in the face. I saw a white flash in that. I got told you to do what we tell you to do. I told to take my clothes off, start playing with them, sucking them off. And then they raped me, about six of them. And it went on all night. It went on for weeks, every night. And they'd take turns with me, staying in the bed all night, two at a time, um, raped me. And then they just went the next one, the next one, the next one. They just went on and on and on, laughing and joking and uh, make me do dirty things. I wouldn't want to wish on anyone. I caught up with every single one of them. I severely hurt them. I severely hurt them. I just fucking punched them or kicked them and that. But the main one, I uh, managed to pick up. He didn't recognise me, but I remembered him. He got hurt as well. I met him one night in the, uh, in the gay village and I uh, dealt with him. I dealt with him severely. I really hurt him. I tortured him proper. The best, the best quality torturing I could do. Just fucking not fuck out of him. I um, did things that he wish he never did to me. Despite his criminality, Dominic regularly visits his local Catholic church. Dominic, you've done some terrible things. How do you manage that with being a Christian and a Catholic? I get satisfaction coming to a church and asking for forgiveness, and I believe I've just been forgiven for what I've done. I can just walk out of here and probably do the same again and just come back here. 
obviously you can't do that, the courts say I'm sorry and they expect to walk away. Do you have any consideration for the kind of victims? I do, yeah. On, on a, quite a few. And I, I look back and uh, think, should I have done that? Shouldn't have handled it a different way? And sometimes I think, no, that's what they deserved. They did it to someone else and they get back what they've done. Do you ever kill a man? No. Do you ever order a man to be killed? I can't answer questions like that, can I really? You can't answer questions like that. I'll be arrested. It's been alleged that I have. But, uh, if you allegedly ordered the execution of a man, would you allegedly feel guilty about that? If I was going to do something like that, that person would have to have done something, something really bad. Not a silly thing, it's something really, really serious. Then, yeah, I wouldn't think twice about it. How do you sleep at night? Laid out on my bed straight. Dominic is on his way to London for another trial. He's accused of being part of a £600,000 heroin deal with a major London criminal. The prosecution claim he rode shotgun on the car that picked up the drugs and that he arranged the final details of the deal outside this London cafe. Dominic claims he only acted as security for what he thought would be the collection of some foreign currency. Her Majesty's Customs and Excise beg to differ. Yeah, I'm just heading into court now. Yeah, cheers. All right. Dominic Lattley, Fox Boy, go to court number three. If found guilty, Dominic Noonan, AKA Mr. Lattley Fotfoy, will face up to 15 years in prison. Longer What's happened? Uh, Joey's gone out for the considered events. Yeah. Sent a note in. It's going to go with Desi. That's the cause. Desi, the jury's just come back in. They've uh, been sent home by the judge, but they did send a letter in, which is encouraging. They said, is it possible to find one guilty and one not guilty on count four? Well, I'm here to give my side of the story, but the fella's not here. Kid, I'll call you back one minute. So one of you, it seems, is going to be declared innocent? Yeah. You can't send an innocent man down. He was only picking up foreign currency. Only down there for security. The jury of six women and six men have been out for four days. <laughs> yes! <Did they>? Nice <laughs> one. Come on, let's go. Get my up. Yeah, come, let's go. The dog's just come out of court. They're not guilty. Come on, what happened? All right. Just uh, come back with a not guilty verdict, which is the right verdict to come back with. Uh, at the end of the day, my solicitors and me, barrister, did the investigation for that case to prove my case was innocent. Nothing else, nothing short, nothing less. What now? I'm going to go back because we've sorted out my expenses. Yeah. It's cost me a lot of money, this trial. Only one defendant in the multi million pound trial was convicted, but he had already skipped the country. Press justice! Right, to press justice! Freeze! Everybody clap your hands! Thank you for everyone coming tonight. As you know, I was on a very serious charge down in London for a charge I never knew about. I went down there as security, someone else was picking up some drugs. I thought it was a load of money. I'm talking a load of bullshit, but who gives a fuck? <laughs> Uh, enjoy yourselves, eat the food, don't wait for me because I've just had some chips on the way up. This is dedicated to the customs and excise. We can walk down. Because I love you too much, baby. Why can't you?
His respite from the law may be brief. Dominic is about to face a trial involving kidnap, torture and a half a million pound ransom. Of course, Mr. Latley thoughtfully denies the charges. Yeah.